It was like the doctor's office. One or two. <laughs> Op the optometrist. Three or four. Here's the one I'm trying. Yeah, it's closer. You well, could, you know, I left I left the highlights on and, and the other lights. I could try turning those off. I'm not sure if it's better. I think last time you said it was better with those highlights on. Uh, you, look, you look fine. You look better than me, which, you know, it's never what I want. All right. Oh, wait. But wait, there's more. Let's see. Oh, look, Gary Pierce is live on Ham Radio now. That Gary guy. Going live on ham radio now. No, that doesn't How do work. I do this? What are you trying to do? Oh, Santa. No, oh, wait, I have to. Yeah, I did this sadly. before. I guess I just tried not to shake too much and knock the phones off. Yeah, I'll go get my Hanukkah Bob hat. <laughs> Hanukkah Harry, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. We, I mean, there's lots of different Hanukkah whatevers. No, no, they're all fictional and none of them. Not really. It's not like really Santa Claus. Cause really <laughs> yeah, like Santa really Claus is, is real there too. There really is a Santa. No, he was at my office. I saw him. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yes, there Virginia. Are, oh, there is a Santa we, Claus. We have six people watching us, and I know it's not just you and me. That means there's four more. So I'll say hi, Betsy, and <laughs> I'm not sure who else it will be. Yeah, and I'm not watching us, so I'm not one of them. Oh, you're not. Oh, so there's <clears> five <throat> others. Yeah. Okay, how tired do I look? Up at 4.30 in the morning? Well, not so bad. Yeah, I'm tired. It's late where you are. It's coming up on 9 o'clock. In fact, it is 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. Do you know where your Gary is? Am I rolling the hard drive? I am rolling the hard drive. Even though I wasn't really intending to make this a whole episode, but I'm going to. Okay. Cause we, have an, we have an hour. Yes, you have a hard out. Yeah, the, the YL will come looking for me. And I fixed the uh, Santa hat on the gnome. Oh, the roaming gnome. He looks good. <laughs> it's actually kind of floating in midair above his head. Yes. But... And you know, and I can I can just imagine one of those commercials, you know, him saying something about his hat and I don't know. <laughs> my hat is flying above my head. There you go. He's got, well, he's got that permanent red hat. I just need to put a fuzzball on top of it and be okay. Yeah. Or a bigger one so it holds a little higher. All right. Um, we did not okay, rehearse we this. We're a minute over. Yeah, we did not rehearse it. I have no idea what the title is. Whoosh. It did whoosh. You don't hear the whoosh. I know. I never do. Out, the people out there hear the whoosh. Ham Radio Now, episode number 376, Holiday Bull Session. Oh, it's BS and BS number 10. So this is not an MCOM extra. No, but it is a bull session. So, and slow awesome. down. Okay. I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you, um, producer prompts. Okay. Slow down. I'm going to take a deep breath. Yeah. You are? I am David Goldenberg, W0DHG. Going to have to change that to host. Host? From okay. co-host. Coast. We will do that. I'll have to, and once you do that, you'll have to, um, Send me the yeah. PNG file. I am this guy, Gary Pierce, KN4IQ. And down to the to the bug. So um, we didn't really have anything to do. Yep. Just, but we wanted to give you a show. Is there still any Hanukkah left or is it all over? Nope. It's done. In the box. In the can, as we say in Hollywood. <clears throat> Did you get lots of stuff? Do adults still get did, stuff or is it all kids? Did, um, I got, actually, I got some stuff. I got some stuff. I got a couple, you know, adults get clothes and other practical things. <laughs> That's what I get. I got a couple belts that fit me now because my old belts, I was having to punch extra holes in them. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I, and I got a nice shirt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not, not to, um, rain on the excellent parade you're on, but I've been there. <laughs> Don't throw away the fat clothes. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I won't. I won't. They were all, all just moving to the right of my closet, and yeah. that goes deeper and deeper in the hole. Yep. I've got clothes left over from when I weighed 165. Mm. That's in the rearview mirror. <laughs> and from when I, when I weighed 100, two, 220, mm -hmm. and uh, then back down to 173 or so, and now about 192. Yep. So, uh, uh, 
We, I'm uh, not getting rid of it, but I'm also committed to stay in the path. Yeah. Of course. Got to swing, big... swing over a cat cam here. Oh, cat cam. You we had a big you holiday. Talk. Where is she? Where are they? I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, there they are. And it looked like looking at something intently, except that one doesn't look. Something's going on over there. <clears throat> it's going to be uh, batting on those blinds intermittently. Mm -hmm. Maybe even enough to make some noise you can hear. I don't know. Yep, there it is. <laughs> it's moving. I hear it. There's a fly or a bug or a something in there. No, it's just... Just, um, that's what it does. Sometimes for hours. Yep. Somebody, uh, <clears throat> somebody put a comment on YouTube on, uh, one of the recent programs pointing out that I spent time futzing with the system and left it in the show and didn't edit it out. Which one? I don't remember. I don't care. Um, that was the last, that was kind of like one of the last bull sessions we did, I think. I think it was the Chicago um, Marathon oh, show. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, my message for that person is, you're watching the wrong show. <laughs> yeah. We may do some more. Uh-oh. David is frozen. Uh, you're back. I'm, oh, did I froze? Oh. Yeah, he did. I was saying we, we might do more futzing. In fact, you were saying maybe I should start doing unboxings or building. In fact, <laughs> well, you can do what you want. That's I know. The, that's the, the whole thing. On the shelf over there, I have a Heath kit project just waiting to be recorded. Is it in the frame you, you now? You can't see it. It's oh. no, it's no, it's off. Camera. Okay. And I'm not showing you that into my garage. There's just no way. <laughs> yep. No way. It's bad enough what you can see behind me. I'm not showing the other side. So you can do um, once you're once you're doing this and you know carrying on your own. Uh, I'm not in charge. Yep, yep. We'll we'll figure it out. I'm actually kind of worried about um, unboxing or building shows that are going to um, be an extreme amount of editing and manipulating <laughs> and titles and all that stuff. All the stuff I listen to to hear from you and and Sterling and some of the other guys that do that. So yeah, uh, I may try one or two and we'll see how they go. If you, if you go back and watch some old Ham Nations, you'll see that George was killing himself right. trying to do technical stuff. And he roped in other people. He roped in like um, Randy Hall, uh, right, K7AGE, right. to uh, to do some. And, and then Randy started killing himself. Yeah, Randy did it for a while, but I haven't seen. He comes and goes, but I mean, it's just, yep. just it was, it's, it's too much for right. the money we're, we're paid. And if, if we were making, you know, big time money. You've frozen again. I am really, or maybe you were just sitting still that time. I don't know. Uh, I may, I may just be sitting still. I'll have to. I'll put my hand in the frame and we'll back and forth. Let's look. Looks like I've got good bandwidth. bandwidth going. Oh, there's some drop offs there. I'm the red one. You're the red one. It's, it's I mean, it's way up and down. That's uh, unusual for a sky. Well, you know, we we actually um, we've been really good at the house here for a couple of weeks and then yesterday or the day before my dad called it you know oh dark 30 in the morning when he knew i was up saying that the internet went down again and i've been fighting with it. so maybe time for us to get another route or two well when you look at something like this um you don't know where the yeah things are yeah it, it, and it's also it's also prime time in the house for <laughs> any the one of the other hams to Watching Hulu and Netflix and YouTube. Yeah, we were watching um, Bright. Uh, never, never heard of it. Is, well, you know, it, it well it just started today on Netflix. It's um, oh oh Will, on Netflix Will, show. Yeah, Will Smith and um, I don't remember the other guy's name. Boy, did that get bad reviews? Did it? Because it just dropped today, and so I, I'm about an hour into it, or maybe forty minutes into it. Not so bad so far. Okay. I think they're just getting to the plot. <laughs> All right. So I, I can't say one it's, way or it's the Will other. Smith is is a forty eight hours cop. Yes. And uh ish cop. And an alien is his Well he's like an uh um, buddy cop. Orc. Yeah, it's like it's like fantasy. <clears throat> I don't know what it's an like, orc is. It's like Los Angeles with um Lord of the Rings, because there's like orcs <laughs> and okay. 
dwarves and elves and and all sorts of other fairies and stuff like that. That's the way it really we'll is there anyway. So yeah, what, what you got? there are the moments. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles. There are the moments. So yeah, so I who knows I might try an unboxing or a it means I have to buy something, but that's okay. Or a um or a build project and uh have to move some cameras around and work on some angles, yeah. but you never know. Well, as we know, in the ham radio television business, those are the programs that, that get views. Right. And uh, we rarely get much in the way of views. I mean, yeah. so, you know, getting, we, we, you know, sort of a minimum of a few hundred and, and it tops out in the four to 5,000 for some really popular programs. But even the stuff on, on uh, the NCIS and the, and the uh, never was heard, never, mm-hmm. Never is quiet night, holy hell, <laughs> from Newington. I'm making up titles in my mind. Um, right. You know, they're seeing a few thousand. Newington. They're seeing a few one. thousand, but they're not, you know, shows like that should, should you know, 10,000 ham should watch them. And I'm kind of disappointed that they're not. Yeah. So, you know, go um, do a de-expedition video or something. We could try that. <clears throat> or if we get everybody, everybody who's watching, you know, you tell two friends and they tell two <laughs> friends and so on and so on. And I've tried that. It didn't work. Yeah. How many of you guys out there are pushing share on your, uh, on your, uh, Facebook thing? Gosh, I didn't even do that. <laughs> I'm going to go do it right now. I'm useless. Oh, uh, well, I forget. I have to, you know, I'm starting to have post-it notes around the screen saying, um, do this. So I just shared, watch us. Okay. So speaking of watching. And we're up tonight. You had, you had excitement. Yeah, we had a little excitement here on the West Coast about um, 20 minutes or half an hour ago. I went to take the trash out. And um, yeah, we saw this. And apparently they Little saw this. Urban Hills. wonder what all this might be. Apparently they saw this as far as... Um, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona had similar posts. So the top, the top light is the moon and the one on the, and that's contrail there. And the one on the, on the left, that's the rocket. And the one on the right is, I I guess it's one of the stages that separated and is still burning away. But I I guess SpaceX launched something. From Vandenberg, you said? From Vandenberg Air Force Base. How far away is that? Vandenberg is uh, maybe 200 miles plus or minus which, which direction uh north north of us north and maybe a little west so these are ufos yes well for me it was but for the rest of the country they knew that it was a spacex rocket yep. yeah i think that then it's over low woodland hills oh, start, but you know you, started over. you go out yeah it starts over you know you go outside and you see that and you think you know the not that the sky is falling but but maybe for somebody else. My kids were on the way to in and out and apparently they all pulled over and they thought we were being nuked. <laughs> I said, no, no, correctly, we probably might be nuking someone else. Okay. The Santa hat is getting too hot. Is it too warm? It would be welcome here. It's in the 40s outside here. It got cold. We're in winter. Real winter. Yeah. 40s for a low overnight? Yeah. Okay. When I went to... When I went to the, you know, I uh, hit the gym this morning at five and it was 38 at the gym and uh, coach said you could do the wall run, which is like a quarter mile outside on the alley, or you could do 200 jump ropes instead. And I did one of the 200 jump ropes. And on the second round, I said, no, I'm going to do the wall run. It was (laughs) colder, but easier. Uh Uh-oh, somebody's knocking something over in the background. That was on my end? Yeah, cats behind you knock something over. (laughs) I heard the right. thud. Yep. It looked like a microphone or something went over. It looks like a handy talkie. Yeah. Uh, oh, HD. You can't see it. This mic's in the way. Okay. Yep. So, so that's cold ex- exiting frame left. There you go. Oh, yeah. So, Iridium, I guess uh, Dave said uh, Iridium 4 launched, whatever that is. I, I thought Iridiums were done. There was the um, Motorola. Um, 
satellite phone system, I think. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I've heard the Iridium flares because they're, right. they're pretty low and they have this very shiny surface that catches the sun just at the right time and becomes a real bright, bright flash on the uh, surface. You have to wear your eclipse glasses or you go blind. Oh, no, it wasn't that bright. Well, I'm kidding. But. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. It was bright. It's done. We're all good. Everything's safe. All right. But it did So happen. we forgot to say uh, this is Ham Radio Now, the most important, and you're having trouble with that. No, oh, that's okay. I, well, I'm starting, actually, I'm starting more and more to, um, to believe it. <laughs> well, it didn't start out to be true. It was just right. an advertising phrase. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's uh, where yeah, Jerry yeah. Ellsworth called me on it, and I, I went, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I did. Right. It's not the most well, important we, amateur radio program. Well, well, it could be. In our in our mind, as far as I'm concerned, it is, and that's, oh, that's yeah. the part that I'm getting better with every day. And, you know, as long as I don't get a cease and desist letter from somebody's attorney, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> okay, well, that, that works for me. I mean, you could say, this is Ham Radio Now, and... Amateur radio program on the internet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm good with for now. Anyone else can make that claim. We'll keep saying we're the most important one. Okay. I'm all right with that. Yeah. I mean, no one has called us on it so far. Right. And a few people have said it's true. Yeah, who are those people? They're fans. All those people they're, should tell, to tell all their friends to watch <laughs> us too. They're rabid fans. Yes. yes Hello, rabid fans. Here's something else we just forgot to do. There's um, Arvin. We got to click the pig. I realized that my um, my Arvin's okay, but I guess my call sign fell down. And your Arvin's okay too. He's um, where is he? There he is. And then behind my um, my FJ model, there's my call sign. You can see part of a V <laughs> from the W. It doesn't mean that you've lost your call sign. It's just no, no, just the sign. Just the sign. Just a sign fell down. Yeah, right. just a sign. So, hamradionow.tv, if you enjoy the programs and send us money. So, yes, please. Support us. We've done okay. I mean, it's kind of average. What didn't happen this year was um, I didn't do a, a Kickstarter. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm real froggy tonight. I didn't do a Kickstarter for uh, Tapper. Right. And I was kind of hoping that people would fill in with just ordinary contributions. And to a limited extent, that happened. But the Kickstarters run um, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, and the the bump that I've seen from Tapper is uh, not including the Yasmi contribution of a thousand dollars is a few hundred, you know, not even a thousand. So um, there'll be a Kickstarter next time, assuming. I yeah, do what do you? It. So what do you think it really costs <clears throat> you to? Well, it. I mean, it costs. Um, you got to travel. Yeah, it, it's it's a few thousand dollars in in pure out of pocket for mm. travel and hotels and stuff hotels like that. And, stuff. Yeah. and the rest is it takes a long time. I mean, I finally got yeah. them out, but there's yeah, there's there's a lot of hours in the studio time. Yeah, it's like eighty hours of uh, production yeah. time. It's, uh, it's almost a day per show, mm. and uh, by day I'm talking about mm, six you know six to eight hour a day, and there's twenty two of the shows. So I'm, 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 I'm underestimating. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of days, a lot yeah. of time. How much, how much would you work for a month to, to earn? Yeah. Yeah. It will be a lot of late nights for me. Yeah. So, so there'll be a Kickstarter. I, um, although I am standing back from the ham radio stuff, um, on the show and I, I'm anticipating that I'll probably continue to do the Tapper conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, I am booked to go to uh, Orlando because I've already got the hotel and I've got the uh, the booth. But I'm not sure about Dayton this year. I may, right. I may or may not go. We'll see. We'll see how, how, how other stuff gets ginned up and works out. Yeah, and last year I was thinking when you guys were at Dayton, it looked like a lot of fun and I was going to try <laughs> to figure out how to make it work, but I'm not really sure that I can make that work or not. We'll see. Well, I am going to try to go to Visalia. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, should, I know I should. I'm going to try to go to Visalia and cover uh, cover something there that we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks for sure. Yeah. We talked about recently too. So uh, let's see. When we were doing 
I think the beginning of the Chicago show before we got into the uh, the marathon, mm-hmm. uh, we we're, were talking about the NCIS Newington thing. Yeah. And you said something that I didn't get until I played it back. Um, we were looking at at that last line. Mm-hmm. Um, come on. Oh, into whatever pundits. Pundits. You didn't get that part? I, well, I, I got that you were talking about pundits. Oh, but you didn't get that he called us out. Well, what you had said was that we are the only people that call ourselves pundits. That, yeah, yeah, that and, I've heard. And so, yeah, and so ha- him using that word, we're talking about Tom Gallagher, yeah. uh, ARL CEO, and his editorial in the January QST that he titled NCIS Newington, which yep. is the name of an episode that we did. <gasps> and he said... Uh, and to whichever of the pundits in the crowd coined the phrase NCAS Newington, I say thank you. He liked it He d- as if he doesn't know it was us. And what you oh. were pointing out was, well, the word pundits is a giveaway. I didn't, yes. ca- I didn't catch that. Well, you know, it's funny too because it's not just the word pundits. It's the fact that it's the title of the episode we did. Well, yeah, that's the big and, giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> that's the big giveaway yeah. and the pundits. And yeah. – uh, and then I guess, you know, kind of alludes to the fact that maybe he even watched our episode. Maybe. I, if he hasn't, if he hadn't then. <laughs> yeah, he probably did. Now. <clears throat> he has by now. If you're going to, yeah. by the way, if you're going to be a pundit, you're going to have to pronounce it right. Yes. There's, n- there's okay. no, there's only one end. Pundit. Pun, pundit. Pundit. Yeah. That's us. And there isn't anybody else. A pundit is just a person on the media who talks about stuff. Right. And you could add stuff they have no idea what they're talking about if you want to, you know, be complete about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, Ab- it's absolutely, it's all the, all the guys on Fox News at night, on MSNBC and on CNN. Right. And uh, on the Sunday morning talk shows, they're pundits. It's what, right. It's what we do. It is. But, but I guess as I but, pointed out that you hadn't caught, there aren't any other ham radio yeah, I mean, folks that, George and Tommy don't call themselves pundits. Yeah. Marty doesn't. Sterling doesn't. Well, they don't know Dan. what it is because they're young. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Neil doesn't. Right. Bob doesn't. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So anyway, uh, and I, as I was going over that, I was also realizing that uh, you know, his whole article was actually talking about that show which yep. we talked about. He made some of the same same comments, kind of as if he'd seen the show. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I there have been other folks that have talked about, I don't remember which show, somebody else show, talked about it or in a forum somewhere. And, and everybody that I've read so far had kind of the same response to it. I mean, there were definitely people in forums and whatever that said, you know, it's just TV, give them a break. But I think all of the people that are really – looking at it and reporting and critical basically kind of all came to the same conclusion that they, they didn't do us a, uh, you know, they didn't show us in the right light. Yeah. And uh, it would have been nice if they had. Not very many people uh, got that one line that is the, the killer line for me. And I, I can't quote it, but it's basically a, you know, no, no job, no reportable income, no phone, no, um, right. You know, right. You know, just exactly what you'd expect when you think of a ham radio weirdo. Yeah, and that's not what I would think because right. if you didn't have a job and you didn't have a phone, and so first of all, how are you going to buy the stuff you're going to have, and how are you going to make a calls to the people to order stuff from HRO? And yeah, yeah, and I suppose that you could interpret that to mean literally a ham radio weirdo. Not that every ham is a weirdo, but if you think of some of them as being super weird. But he was talking to somebody who only had a you know a vague knowledge of hams. Yeah. Although the, the woman said that, yeah, I know hams. I, you know, <laughs> she also said, you know, they're, they're social introverts. They have trouble mixing in society. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, th- I think they were, I think they were th- throwing shade on all of us when they used that line. Uh, here's something that, that is, I think I might have even mentioned that, you know, talking about the handle thing, mm-hmm. the term doesn't, uh, Tom is saying, doesn't the term handle just set your teeth on edge? Mm-hmm. It makes mine grind. It's my top 10 list with good buddy. 
Right. Conjures up visions of bears and green stamps. You got a bear in the air. Um, so I don't know how long he's been a ham, but hams have used the term handle for ever that I'm aware of. You know, when I hear handle, I think, <clears throat> I think, you know, the, not the good buddy, but I think that 10, four, cause that's one, you know, when, when I talk to people who don't know who, that I'm a ham, that's when they find out that's the, always the thing they start with. Ten, ten, four, ten good four good buddy. buddy. <laughs> yeah, ten four yeah. good buddy. Well, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, when, one of the things John Amadeo was saying when they put the ham station in on uh, Last Man Standing. If he caught any of the crew going walking by and going ten four good buddy, <laughs> he gave them a talking to. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't rate giving them a talking to, but I I shake my head and yeah, we don't yeah. we don't do that. <sighs> anyway, um, it's just <laughs> odd that Tom that that's a term that Tom bothered Tom so much. Because that's, again, that's where I got in trouble a bit. Um, I, I was talking to a guy that I didn't know very well. Mm-hmm. And he, he said, uh, what's your handle? Mm-hmm. And I said, and he was not fresh out of CB. He's been a ham as longer, longer right. than I am. Yeah. And So uh, when they say that, they want to know your call sign. Your name. Or your name. Yeah, yeah that's the part I always get wrong. And I guess, I guess it's because I don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't not, think of it as a handle. It's not it's a my name. big thing. But it's, yeah. it is a thing, and you know that's where I replied, I don't have a handle. you got to pick me up by the ears. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> or there is one, but you got to know me really well to be able to, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> David! <laughs> sorry. And, and this is Ham Radio Now, the program I, featuring I kept, David Goldenberg I, I and some other guy. I kept it PG there. I think I could have gone. You're, I could have gone a little farther. You're turning redder. I'm not sure why. I, I am. I absolutely am. <laughs> I think you're adjusting re- your camera again. I think. I, no, I realized I stepped about a half a foot over the line there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think the same thing when when somebody asked me my handle, I might might do one of those. I'm like, what are you asking me for? Your name. Yeah. No, my name is my name. Well, it's my handle. Yeah. If I introduced myself at a cocktail party by my handle, then again, back to that weird and, you know, it doesn't have a job and no reportable income and all those other things. I don't, I don't want to do that. So speaking of, of um, ham radio terminology, mm-hmm. one of the things that, that, we, um, that we did in our public service events, the Bike MS and, and others in this area, mm-hmm. and I've seen uh, pick up some steam around, around the country is um, – for some reason, hams had a real hard time um, using the word emergency when they had one. They had to come up with other things. I don't know if you've ever come across this, but <clears throat> there was um, there there is a um, thing in ham radio. Well, I'll say thing because I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Where you break down the level of urgency. By the number of times you say the word break. Right. Say the word break once. Have you heard this? You say break once. Yeah. And that is, I just, yeah, I want to get in. I just want to get break, in. Break, break, and it's important. And if you've got a desperate emergency, if there's you know blood running across the street, it's break, break, break. And they tr- were trying to encourage that in some of the events that I was working on. And I said, excuse me, we already have a perfectly good word that doesn't need any interpretation. It is emergency. And the reason I'm bringing that up now is I was listening to uh, some news reports from that railroad derailing in uh, in Oregon last uh-huh. week, earlier this uh, week. Washington, Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Portland. No, it was between Seattle. Yeah, but okay, it was Seattle in and Portland. Okay. It's okay. I, I yeah. won't correct you anymore. <laughs> that's a, just keep it. Keep, keep this, it. This keep story's it good. Keep, keep running. Keep running there. So um, they were they played little snippets of the uh, of the radio traffic from the engine right after it happened, yep. and yep. the guy says emergency, emergency, and I yep. was going, yes, yep, yep, validation from the pros. Yeah, you know, um, what do you guys do? If you want to stop a net or traffic in progress. Um, I say it twice. I don't say it three times. Or I guess if they didn't stop, say what? Break, break. Oh no, no. But, but, but. Give them books to eat the covers. 
on the other side, but you know that's that's our protocol. That that's what um, that's what I was taught. But on the other hand, we were taught um, by someone who did it wrong. You, well, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Um, but on the other hand, um, when I have encountered so so when we do drills, and you know mostly you know my ham career has been drills. I haven't done that many um, actuals, right? <laughs> Um, well, you've we, done lots of events, though. Yeah, well, we do. We always do a ton of events, um, which is well, going to be the case for most hams. They they may never do something real. Yeah. When when we do a drill, we try to remember to say all the time, over and over and over again, "This is a drill. This is a drill." <laughs> because when you get on the radio and say, you know, that there's a bus crash and there's like fourteen, you know, dead children, and we need to have six ambulances and. Um, you know, we need fire and police and all those other things. Uh, it's possible something else is listening and they're going to freak out a little bit. Yeah. Now well, the other side of it is. Even hams um, that are tuned in late. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The other side of it is when we do these events or, or, um, drills or, or whatever you call them, I have, um, actual experience uh, wasn't the first time maybe the second or third time I participated in the statewide hospital drill here in Southern California when I showed up at the hospital at um, ODARC 30 to get my station set up and to check in with the hospital folks and to figure out the lay of the land and what we were going to do the hospital I was at had no power and when I had to call into our net to say that 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 was a case we use a different set of words. We say this is real world because everybody else expects it to be a drill. And when you go on to the air and say, uh, you know, West Hills Hospital has no power at this time, they're going to be like, oh, that's a good inject into the drill. Yeah. And you were in the thanks, middle of a drill. Playing. We were getting ready to start one. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, and it was weird, and it was it was a little disconcerting that I you know got to the door and the security guard was inside and he was trying to pull the sliding glass door open and, <laughs> and it wouldn't do that and it was very dark at you know five thirty in the morning you don't expect to roll up to a hospital and see no lights on at all um, and you know, so I got on the radio and I you know called in that you know I was on site and you know real world there is no power at the hospital at this time and I will be doing further investigation and of course net control came back and you know said please re repeat and clarify your traffic i'm like okay well, well good I said it again yeah. real world there is no power now there wasn't an emergency um at least reported or otherwise it was just the fact that i had observed because that's another thing that's really important to us is um we don't want people you know getting on and reporting you know speculations you know i think this happened or i think the hospital's going to collapse or i think there's a fire or i think people are injured you know you actually have to have real world knowledge that this happened or that's going on or, or what have you. It was kind of exciting. Yeah. I, I think I actually had a second or maybe a third person come back and say, could you, you know, clarify and repeat <laughs> your traffic? So yeah, that the real world thing is a standard procedure, but maybe cause it doesn't get used very much. People aren't really used to it. I know. I think, I think it wasn't that. I think people just thought, you know, I was an idiot on the air <laughs> and didn't know what I was talking about. And um, they wanted to make sure that, you know, I did understand the protocol and there really was something going on there. Because, you know, when, when something really happens when you're doing a drill, people are like, no, nah, it's not really happening. They're just making it up. Yeah. Um, I guess. Well, good job. This is yeah. er, this was early in your MCOM career? Yeah, this was probably... Before, before you established I, all of your street cred? I was, uh, I was if, if I was anything, I was in AEC... I AEC or yeah, I was probably an AEC at the time. And and I had an EC that I reported to before I went to the DEC. And yes, I didn't have as much street current. It was before <laughs> I had all, all of the lectures that I had from all the different people to say, you know, when you call someone, you call, you know, you call them and then you call you because every once in a while I'd call me and then call them and people wouldn't know. And I was still learning. All right. Well, maybe we have uh, spurred another debate. Emergency versus break, break, breakity, break, break, break. Yeah, break. you know, I guess I have trouble with that too. The one, the one, you know, if you say one break, it's yeah, I'd like to get in there and have a couple words. 
And that's very common on um, like Papa repeater system is I'm a member of and it's drive time and they don't do, do a lot of serious stuff on there during the day. And, you know, e evenings they do the NTS net and they do some round tables and new ham nets and stuff like that. And that's serious net um, with, you know, um, a net control operator and, you know, you have to call net control and get approval and all those things. The rest of the time, it's just, you know, open, open, you know, whoever can jump in can, can jump in. And if somebody has something that they need to get across urgently, they will say break. Um, if I have something to say, typically I will just throw in the word comment, just assuming that if they want to hear what I have to say, that's great. And if they don't, they're just going to keep talking and I won't take offense to it one way or the other. But I rarely have anything that's so important that I have to say, everybody stop and listen to me. <laughs> yeah. um, that's that for me, that's the two breaks or if I really needed to do it, I probably would two break and then wait a little while and two break again and maybe wait a little while. And then I might actually go to saying, you know, there's a real world, you know, emergency or situation that needs me to have more airtime than you're talking about your golf stones <laughs> or the, you know, your lumbago or whatever it is that the guys talk about on, on the UHF VHF spectrum out here during the day. Is that me or you binging? Kind of hard to tell. No. It was me. Oh, okay. I stopped. I heard bing, bong, bing. Might have been somebody no, trying that was, to. that was you. No, that must have been you. Uh, somebody trying to. I think I turned my phone quiet. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, it might have been my phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it probably was. No, I don't know. But on to do not disturb. So, um. Total so, hey, silence. I have, a, I have a really interesting observation here. And, um. You may or may not like this or not. Well, before we get away from that, I was going to say that oh, um, had you consulted the authority on all things operational, the ARL operating manual, <laughs> in the FM and repeaters chapter, you would have discovered the right way to do things. Mm -hmm. Which would be exactly what I explained to you. And can you guess why? Mm, I can guess, but I'll be wrong. <laughs> I wrote that chapter. Oh, it's because you wrote it. Okay. I would have definitely guessed wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that the air, the air, the ARES or the ARRL? -R -R ARRL. Okay. Operating manual. Okay. I had that somewhere. Yeah. A few years ago, I, mm -hmm. um, I wrote that up in it and I addressed the break thing. My mm -hmm. main reason for, uh, for it and for the word emergency is that, um, and I think what I said was that, that in various parts of the country, you'll hear people explain, here's what break and here's a break, break, and here's what break, break, break means. Right. My point being, not everybody understands that. It is not universal. The word was, emergency was, is understood by everybody who speaks English. So, so wait, so break is one thing, break, break is something, I, I, and I'll have to go read the, the book. The, the procedure that, that, <laughs> that I'm suggesting the procedure that I'm requiring everyone to follow. <laughs> right. It's the same emergency. It's, yeah. It, well, if you have an emergency, say that. If all you want right. to do is is get in, just give your call sign. Right. Just, well, yeah. and that and, and that's what happens. I think a lot of times what we hear is <clears throat> someone will give their call sign. And sometimes the, the two or three gentlemen that are talking about whatever, you know, the weather or something else. They don't catch it. Oh, um, yeah. where they say, acknowledge the call sign. I'll be back <laughs> to you in 20 minutes. Well, you know, it's, it could be like three or four different things. One is they don't catch it. One is they may have heard it, but they didn't slow down to acknowledge it, which is different than they missed it. Then there one is that will say, yeah, we heard you and we're just going to keep talking. Yeah. And then I guess the fourth thing is, okay, well, what do you need? Yeah. So the other thing you can do, and this is not very official procedure-ish because it, mm. we all want to be doing official procedure. Official procedure makes us feel more important is to say this KN4AQ, can I get a comment in here? Mm -hmm. and you can, yeah, that's you, a, a, official procedure, comment, um, contact, which hey, I hear that that's, I, I heard those on the service nets, the uh, East cars, mm -hmm. mid cars, uh, mm -hmm. South cars. You guys don't have a West cars. All you got is, uh, Gordon West's 40 meter net. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. don't know why there's no West cars. 
Uh, but if you, they, their procedure is if you, if you want to talk to somebody that you just heard on the net, you say contact, mm -hmm. which is, I guess that works. And that's something that they say often enough that the people get it. But right. on, on repeaters, there's nothing universal. So, yeah, and, and I think, and I, I think I say comment because I've heard others do that too. And, yeah. oh, sure. and I think that when I, when I do that, it's <clears throat> whatever you were talking about, I have some information <laughs> regarding it. And if you choose to acknowledge me, I will share the <laughs> bit of trivia or information. And if you don't, then I, I won't take it personal. Because it's different than saying emergency, right? Because well, yeah, you don't want to say emergency then. Yes, though. of course, of course. <laughs> but you know, if they're talking about you know this tool or that tool or this thing or that event, and I know something about it, I will you know throw in comment. And sometimes they don't hear it, and um, and and again, it, it goes back to sometimes there's those four possibilities: they didn't hear it, or they heard it and they didn't acknowledge, or they may say, "Oh, I acknowledge the comment," but they keep talking, or sometimes they'll say, "Stop and let's hear what it is." Yeah. And uh, to get someone's attention in a situation like that, you know, I think, um, well, people have told me that you got to be quick, otherwise they're going to step on you. Well, if they're hearing the first syllable, they're not going to start talking. They'll wait until you stop as you're breaking in. So I break not, in a little slower. Not on, not on the repeater system <laughs> that I listen to. So, you know what? And it's, and it's hard sometimes too, because there are, there are some of them, you know, and it's like, they're talking and as soon as the last guy stops, the other guys click in and then and, and over and over and over again. And it's like they're, you know, it's like um, synchronized swimming, you know? Yeah. They're done with the one and they do the next and they're done with the one. And, and there are some of the repeater systems here, like um, Darn is, is full duplex. And so <clears throat> I, you know, behind me, you can actually see there's, there's two, there's, um, that's a two meter radio and that's a dual band. That's a FT7800, and that's a 2900. And when we do the the Monday nets for Aries, because <clears throat> I'm the net manager, and some of the times I do the net, but the rest of the time I'm there in case it all falls apart to help, the lower radio I put on the two-meter side of the darn system, and the upper radio is where I talk, and I turn the volume off. And so no matter whether I'm talking or listening, I can hear everything. So if I start to key and put my call sign in, Somebody else does at the same time too on the lower radio. I hear what's going on, and I'm like, okay, I'll just stop and let them do it yeah, it's until it, until it's quiet. Yeah, it, it oh, it's totally useful. And you know, some people have you know the the radios have two sides, and you can do both at the same time. I just I just do it in two separate radios. Yeah. We we enforce the uh, give it a break, give it a pause by yeah. setting the putting the timer reset when the repeater either beeps or drops, and if uh -huh. you don't wait. You've got whatever time was left in the timer from the previous guy talking. Oh, okay. Pretty good chance you're going to time out. You're going to clip. You're going to clip off at the yeah. end. Yeah. So we, we made a big deal about it. you can slow down, dude. Yeah. Well, and 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 you know, and the the other thing about the link, you know, those linked repeater systems, because there are even I think Darn has six or eight of them. You you know you have to <clears throat> push the pickle, and then in my mind I say to myself, and I am. <laughs> and then I start talking because they don't all link up, you know, just when you, when you click it down. And yeah. so if somebody happens to be on, you know, one of the ones that I'm not directly into, um, and I just put my call sign right out there, they might get the last two letters or letter if they get anything at all. Um, and, you know, running a net and you have to write stuff down. It's, it's very frustrating and difficult. Yeah. If I've got something to add to a conversation, I will say, oh, this can 4 aq I think I got something you guys uh, might, right. you know, um, that I could add to your, add to yeah, your knowledge yeah. base. Yeah. And my, my experience here on, and like Papa, where, where I would jump in with something like that, you would get stepped on like almost immediately as you would be saying, I have some, yeah, it would be it. They'd be talking. All right. Then I would turn on the linear. <laughs> Now well, there is there is kilowatt. something that there is something that should should gripe Tom Gallagher <laughs> on FM turn on the linear. No one runs yeah. a linear on FM. Right there you go. And nobody out there understands what I'm talking about. So uh, see, I wanted to get to a few other things here. Um, I was going to point out that um, the uh, <laughs> the um, hams night before Christmas. Woo! Picking up a few more views. Got this is um, this is the original version, the standard deaf version. Four hundred and twenty nine views since the beginning of December. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This would be the um, the high deaf version. Picked up 
530 more views since the beginning of December. So somebody's mm -hmm. linking it out there. And this is the, uh, the one where I talk a lot, <laughs> 16 whole more views. No, uh, one, no one's watching. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, so okay. they, they, they're just tuning in for that part. Well, uh, they're watching the other ones. Yeah. yeah. This, the original is still at, uh, it, if I took it all the way back, it's at about 65,000 views. And this one, it's a total of, uh, somewhere in the, um, uh, 15,000 or so. And then this is a, a thousand. So, okay. Oh, well. All right. Skin views. More important. NCS Newington's up to, uh, over 8,000. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm looking, well, I'm looking, I'm just looking on, actually, no. I'm just looking on QRZ. On QRZ, it's got 8,000. Well, now, that, that, that is I not mean, views of the show. That's no, that, that's views of the link there. Right. Got it. Yeah. And they're still commenting on it. They're still commenting on, um, uh, well, yeah, NCS Newington, and, and then the other one is uh, the one about the board. Um, yeah, yeah, we're never as heard. The court, the court, yeah, yeah those two. That, actually, that one is 131 replies and 12, 12,000 views on QRZ, whatever yeah. that means. But there's still only 3,000 or so folks that watch the video, right? All right. And, and of those, only five or 600 watched all the way to the end, right. And you know what, what I was trying to point out before is, you know, we didn't post this and we don't really have a whole ton of content and we're up to 20 live people watching. Thank you for watching. <laughs> people have nothing to do on Friday night. Friday night. Yes, they do. They have us to, us to watch. Well, now, yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. So there's, and you know what? I was thinking Sunday was good, but now I guess maybe Friday night's a better time. Friday night could be good. All right. Oh, wait, we just lost two. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's this, uh, this yeah. is on, uh, Dan Romanchik's blog, KB6NU, something that you would toss to me, but I'll, I'll give him some. Uh... Well, Dan doesn't lose any time at all because I sent <laughs> this last night. I'm so glad he did this. Yep. Um, I'm still reading through all the uh, articles. Well, there's, there's only one thing I think that we really need to look at. Okay. Uh, what Dan is saying here, new proposals would make the ARL board even less democratic. Yep. And of course, the code of conduct thing is... Um, the, that's what the uh, We're Never Is Heard show was all about. And a lot of people are going overboard in, in what they're saying about that. They're saying that directors can't talk to us at all. There's only one specific circumstance in which directors are prohibited from talking to us. Um, uh, of, uh, t uh, uh, talking to us transparently, no matter mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever their views are. And that is after the league has voted, the board has voted on something. And at that point, once it's been voted on, a director can't disagree with the outcome. They have to be on board and say they support it and they can't talk against it anymore. They could have right. been against it tooth and nail in the meeting. They could have been against it tooth and nail before the meeting and talking to you at your club meeting or Hamfest forum or online or whatever. Um, but once they voted, they are required to get on board, <clears throat> which is a whole lot less than they can never talk about it. Mm -hmm. But it's, to me, that's still not nearly good enough after the well, board I, has I guess, voted on something. They should still I, be able to talk about it. I, well, I guess it depends on you know when things come up because it just gets raised in, in a meeting and then they vote on it. Then oh, yeah, and you never hear about it beforehand except for right. this, <laughs> which we're hearing about. And, <laughs> exactly. And this will be a tell everyone you know. Yeah. Okay. So what, what this is all about is as if the code of conduct wasn't draconian enough, I've just become aware of a new set of proposals to amend the bylaws. And these will come up in the January board meeting, which will probably be toward the end of January. Mm -hmm. The last, last year or this year's um, was January 21st or so. So probably toward the end of January. Okay. Director Mike Lysenko into YBB. Um, and, there's no guarantee this will come up. He could, he could always back off, but this has been circulated. And um, let me get to the, the most important part um, because he, he's got several amendments, but most of them tend uh, uh, all work together to make this one amendment actually work. And so this is it. The president and vice presidents, I think there's three, maybe four, three, 
uh, shall possess all the rights and duties of directors. Now I'll read that again. The president and the vice presidents shall possess all the rights and duties of directors. And there's one exception, that they can't vote for the positions of president and vice president. So let's see if we can explain what that really means. Um, As as things stand now, the uh, directors vote on proposals. The president and the vice presidents do not have a vote. Mm -hmm. Only the, the 15 directors do. The directors are elected by we, the membership. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, they're, no, they're, most, they're, most of them. They, well, they're in theory, they run for office. Right. We get a ballot. We vote for them. Right. The president and the vice presidents are elected by the directors. Mm-hmm. And as it stands now, they don't have a vote. What Mike is proposing is to give the president and the vice presidents a vote. On everything except for electing a new president or vice president. Right. Right. Which means that four of the 15 votes on, uh, four of what would be 19 votes on the uh, board of directors are cast by people that the membership did not elect directly. Right. It is basically stacking the board with four more votes. And so the question becomes, well, why? Why? Mm-hmm. What's good about that? Yeah. So why? Yeah. I wonder. No, wonder why. There's nothing. What, what possessed Mike? What What possessed him to um, propose that this happen? Right. Um, and why is that a good idea? Yeah. And and uh, he's just got amendments. He, there's no justification mm-hmm. within them. At some point, well, there would right. be. Right. Um, but we can all think of things that, uh, especially with the rest of this code of conduct thing. Hmm. And the other stuff that is circulating around it, which is perhaps more important, um, that that's a bad idea. It appears that the board is going more and more away from direct responsibility to members and into a closed group. Right. Now, we're certainly well, hearing that from a lot of people. I don't know, I don't know what the motivations of the people on the board are. A lot right. of people are, are assuming some motivations and... Well, we, we talked, we talked about this when we had the, the big, you know, panel show, you know, this is yeah. all of the things we're seeing as much more <clears throat> like the board is going towards being a corporate entity as opposed to a, you know, member elected uh, representative kind of board. Yeah. And, or and is, wonder, um, one wonders about why yeah. that is the case. As Rich Moses and said, circling the wagons. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't think I sent it to Rich. I'll have to update that. Some what? Oh, oh, this stuff? This stuff. Okay. Well, he's probably seen it. Probably a bunch I of just, other I, I think I just outed myself on how Dan, <laughs> Dan got this stuff. You did. You're you welcome, Dan. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> um, so. What else did Dan say in there? Or is there more, more to cover? Uh, around? Well, Dan is, is spending most of his time in the blog repeating what is in those various, uh, Got it. Well, back to the what the heck they're thinking about. Okay. Yeah. So if passed, these amendments give voting privileges to the president and three vice presidents, none of whom were elected. And what his previous blog post or an earlier blog post said, what the heck is the board thinking? Right. How is making the board less democratic going to make ARL and amateur radio better? If anyone can explain that, which is pretty much what we were just saying, he'll be happy to publish his comments there. So, um, we're we're ahead of the eight ball on this one. Although the question is, will our puny voices here on this show get amplified enough by people spreading the word to to make anything happen before this board meeting? And and what could happen? Well, at this point you can talk to your director and say, What the heck? Yeah, you don't agree with this. And your director, in theory, can talk to you and say, never mind, get away from me, boy, you bother me. Uh, you know, don't don't peek behind the curtain and mm-hmm. 
we've got this handled. Don't yeah, worry about is, it. That doesn't sit we well got, with me. We, we got it. We got this. Don't worry about it. Well, or or he could you... explain. He could explain what the real reason is if he knows. Well, what, okay. So so let's. Or let's, he could say this, that's a terrible idea. I'm going to vote against it. Yeah, let's let's dis dismiss all all um all of what we think is rational reality and what would the possibilities? Why why do you think your director would come back and say, "Oh no, Gary, this is an awesome idea because <laughs> of A, B, and C." Yeah, well, and I can't think of a reason, but I'll I can't be think of a reason. Yeah, yeah. And you know, asking. like you know, I could I could go to to mine, but mine was the one that was you know censured last time, and and you know there were three votes that was not to censure him and all the rest of them were to censure him. And I'll assume that given the way that went, this one's going to be a slam dunk for yeah. them. So from the conspiracy theory file, wait, let there, me get out my aluminum foil hat. <laughs> there are five directors who are up for election in mm -hmm. 2018 and mm -hmm. the elections will happen. Um, ballots get mailed out in August. Nominations happen as early as June, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the five directors. This is courtesy of um, the uh, N0 SSC, uh, Sterling's blog, Sterling Silver. I say, I'm going to say that from now on, Sterling Silver. Yeah. And I, I think, again, I, I think I, I know that bulleted list. I, I know the guy who sent it to Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were just a font of knowledge. Uh, yeah, you spread probably. it around. Yeah. So um, the directors that are going to be up for election in 2018 are Kermit Carlson and 9 mm -hmm. I know Car uh, Kermit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a central division director. He lives uh, just outside Chicago. Uh, Mike Lysenko, we were talking about a moment ago, um, yep. N2YBB, Hudson Division Director, so New York. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Fernay, uh, K1KI, New England Division Director. Uh, Jim Pace, K7CEX, Northwestern Division Director. And Jim Boner, N2ZZ Roanoke Division, and that is the division that I live in. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll be checking with Jim on what the heck. Right. All, all of these guys are always invited to be on the show anytime they want to come on the show and talk about stuff. It's an open any invitation. Of the any yeah. of the members of the board, even the and, presidents and vice presidents would be yeah, welcome. Um, yeah. And um, so far, I mean... Yeah. Uh, issuing a blanket uh, invitation here on the show is show business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there's they could they could hear it. Somebody could tell them about it. They could respond to it. But it's that's more show business. Yeah. But I send them email um, and ask them. I should I should make some phone calls because once they're talking to you in person, it gets a little dicier to say no. Sure. Um, I know Jim fairly well. Jim has been on the show. Several times, um, Mike Lysenko has been on the show once. I think I've got a. Uh, I think not in my tenure, but before. Yeah, got a got video here that we were talking about the um, the Parody Act. Uh huh. Uh, so that's Mike Lysenko on the left. For those of you watching the picture, and uh, Chris Imlay, their attorney in the middle, and me over there on the right. Um, you're wearing the same shirt. Yeah, this, this I am. <laughs> By the way, this is my traditional Christmas colors: this orange and, and gray. Got it. And the and the hat. There you go. Yeah, that's not a good look. There you go. Um. So, where was I? Uh. Anyway, these the, these guys are welcome to come on. You would be wise to. Um, it's on Dan's blog, uh, so you can look it up at um, K, um, KN6, let me get this right, KB6NU. KB6NU. Kilo yeah. Bravo 6 November Uniform dot com. And you can get a reference to what all these folks are. Um, and N0SSC.com to see the directors that are going to be uh, up for election so contact your director at this point they should be able to talk to you about exactly what they think about it assuming that they have found out themselves because you had secret in inside information that 
no one else in the universe had, apparently. Who did? You. Me? No, it's out there in the it's out there in the it's wild. It's out there in the wild. Okay. But but you know what? I I am I, I'm starting to feel more and more every day like a um a um intrepid reporter journalist looking for all of the possible leads. Yeah, I'm not really. Got to be careful sorry. about that because uh, yeah, you know, wackos yeah. go at you. Oh, we got a minute and a half for you before you your yeah. coach turns into so, a pumpkin. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, I think we got a. I I'm all packed, so I think we're I think we're okay. It's all good. All right. Um, yeah, you know, um, well, it, where, did, it, did, I, it did land in my lap and, um, and I was told I could share. And so I did. And I'm, you know, honestly, I don't feel like I could go to my director because, um, not cause I don't think he would be honest with me, but I think he's already in a compromised position. And, um, um, I think he needs to be careful about what he says right now. Yeah. Although by the code of conduct, he can talk about it, but yeah. one of the things that we're, that we're anticipating is that the censure will be brought up when it is time for him to be reelected. And I think he's got yes. two years. Um, and, and could be brought up as a reason by the ethics committee to keep him off the ballot and their right. deliberations are not public. Um, and it's happened, it's happened twice before that we know of, mm -hmm. um, happened to, uh, Doug Raymond and, um, the Southeastern division director <clears throat> circumstances are a little different each time, but it's basically the ethics committee that's keeping somebody off from reelection mm -hmm. and, um, and Bob, um, okay. I'm spacing on Bob's last name, Famiglio, I think he was mm -hmm. the vice director for the Atlantic division and he was going to run for director and ethics committee decided that he had a conflict and uh, couldn't run. We might talk later about that next year. Well, be, there are people who want to talk to us um, yeah. on the program that have been involved enough in official positions that they are covered by NDAs and codes of conduct and they can't talk okay. now. But they will be able to s later, yeah. Before this board meeting, so more stuff is coming up. Um, uh, doing the math of the five directors, we know there's three directors that are generally not going along with things that the board wants to do. Um, in terms of the code of conduct, in terms of the uh, um, N6AA censure, and uh, and. The other nexus of controversy is how to handle the uh, Parity Act, because <clears throat> not all the directors are on board with the Parity Act, and and that may be one of the main things that the Code of Conduct and this and the you know censure stuff is all about, is to keep them quiet. Mm -hmm. We did a show on on um, it ain't parody until we say it's parody. Right. Uh, none of the folks that were on that show were directors. Right. Um, but they're all folks that are closely connected to it and lawyers that, um, that don't think that's such a good deal and think we could do better. So I don't know that I'm on board with that. I don't know. Um, but I'm listening in any case, there's, there's three directors right now that, um, the board can't count on to rubber stamp, um, league positions. If by some strange circumstance, the five directors that are up for re-election all lost to an insurgent candidate that somehow managed to make it onto the ballot and stick and get elected, that would be eight votes that the league couldn't count on, and that would be a majority of the 15. Mm -hmm. Until you give votes to the president and three vice presidents. Right. Now, that is a stretch, that happening is a stretch and considering that that is the prime directive, the prime mover for this, this, um, uh, proposal, if it actually comes to pass, uh, the, you know, the stuff that we're seeing to give the, the, the president and vice presidents a vote, if that's the reason for doing it or a big part of the reason for doing it to stack the deck and keep rogue directors from ever being able to, um, uh, uh capture a majority of the vote. Um, that seems, that seems a little bit of a stretch, but if we're seeing panic 
if we're seeing, you know, circling the wagons and, you know, and pulling the all in after you, um, maybe that's got something to do with it right yeah, now. Well, we, don't, we don't know. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll turn it the other way. What are the other possible reasons for wanting to go down this path? And, and I, and I'll leave you with that question. I want to, yeah. I'm not going to leave you, but I will hang <laughs> yeah, that question out we, there. We, What's the other, wh- why, what would be the other justification for wanting to introduce this change? Yeah. Why? We may, What's, we may hear something that when we hear it, we'll say, why didn't we think of that? That's perfectly valid. You, you know what? I could imagine me doing that, but not you, Gary. <laughs> I'm new. I'm new at this, but I still I, I I cannot imagine why why this would be why you want want to or need to do this. Yeah. About this point, I want to mention okay. that I have never been a uh, league minutia expert or follower. There are mm-hmm. folks that look through every minutes of every board meeting with a microscope, mm-hmm. picking stuff out. I've never been Not that you. guy. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that there are some and they pick some stuff out, but the, but the minutes are pretty heavily washed to, um, not bring out controversy. Sure. So you have to be able to read between the lines and, you know, pick stuff out and, and maybe have some, some other contacts to get, get behind that stuff. Mm-hmm. This, this, uh, which I guess, because this stuff is coming out and we're talking about it indicates how egregious it is that it's catching our attention yeah. and catching some ham's attention. Whether yeah. it catches enough, I don't know. <clears throat> and several of us pundits. 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 Yeah. Sorry, pundits. It's sort, of, and, it's sort of like and, the nuclear. Me and you and me and you and Dan and Sterling and, you know, Rich and. Yeah. Well, it's I'm, not just us. It's I'm, not just I'm me. I'm pretty sure that you. Bob Heil is planning on devoting an entire ham nation to this issue. Really? No. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it might make Newsline if, if somebody writes it up and sends it there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I see it there either. I haven't yet, but but it might. No, no, no. I just, I'm, not, I'm just not sure I can imagine seeing that. Speaking of which, <clears throat> the um, not the current... Newsline, but a previous one he had a Ham's mm-hmm. Night Before Christmas, but not mine. Oh, did it? Somebody else's. Somebody mine, else. Mine has been on there years ago. It was on there right, right. the year I wrote it. I think. Is it? Is it? Is it something you could issue a takedown because they've copied you or no? Because no, it's, it's a totally different, totally oh, okay. different poem and um, not nearly as good. But um, of course, but they've done mine. Everybody's done mine. So yeah. Time for someone else to try. That that. Uh, Takeoffs on that are are, uh, are thousands and thousands and thousands. Every little niche interest has got their version of right, right before Christmas. Yeah, yeah, of course, and and that's all, and it's all fair game. And yeah. even if they copied you, mostly they could just say, oh, "I was just parodying <laughs> Gary," and so he can't do anything about and, it. And I've given permission from the beginning for people to to uh, yeah. copy it and use it. Right, right, right. Which, however, reminds me that the title of the poem is not. Was the night before Christmas. Everyone thinks it is. It's not. It is a visit from St. Nicholas. Hmm. That's the title that Clement Clark of the, origi- Moore gave of the original one. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't work for a ham's, a ham's night before a visit from St. Nicholas. What doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't have the same ring. It doesn't, it's not as quite as catchy. No. But you know, that's what happens. You know, you, you name a song something and then they, they go with something else. Yeah. So before, before they do come in, and drag me away. Um, I guess the only other teaser, whatever stuff. Uh, there's something I sent you the other day. Oh, big, big changes coming in, um, ARES and we don't exactly know what it is. Yeah, You had something about that. Yeah. There was a, there was a, a newsletter or a email flash out saying that, um, in the new year, there's going to be a whole bunch of new changes. I'll, a whole national database and new requirements for training and education and some good looking stuff, but, um, uh, not a ton of meat so far. So, um, you know, in the new year, I look forward to seeing an episode that will cover a little bit more detail around 
um, what the changes are and what they mean and, um, you know, what we'll all as uh, current Aries members need to do to get up to speed. Yeah. Maybe they are beginning to answer the criticism about not lining up with the uh, ICS structure well enough and the, um, uh, yeah. the FEMA form, forms and tests and stuff. Yeah. My, my expectations, you know, I, I, I have in my mind, my expectations is, you know, requirements to have done the FEMA 100, 200, 700, 800, and maybe even the ARL MCOM one or one and two and one and two and three. And, and there's some other coursework as well, but you know, who knows? I know that they're going to register people, um, I'm hoping that there's not a whole lot of requirements around if you want to have this role, you have to have this level of this and and so on and so forth. Because, you know, I know I know um, I've been doing this for years and I have the FEMA courses. I have um, some of the air, uh, the ARRL MCOM courses, but I, you know, who knows, I may lose my EC because <laughs> I don't have that one position or, or what have you. And I think um, it would be a, um, I'm not just talking about me, but it'd be a great disservice across the nation if a whole bunch of people that have positions appointed um, right now would find themselves ineligible for, you know, either immediately or needing to to take things to catch up. But I don't want to, I don't want to get into it too much until we know more about. Have, have you ever had what really the ambition is. to take a COMEL to take those, those advanced uh, you know, FEMA courses? I, I, I actually, I am interested in doing it. Um, the challenge here in California is, um, they don't offer it um, that I've seen it all in Southern California. I know that they did it. Um, uh, OCS is, you know, Sacramento offices of, um, I don't know, OEM. Oh, the offices of emergency management has offered it a couple times. It's typically in Northern California in Sacramento where our capital is. And, you know, you've got to get there and, and take care of your travel and your expenses and whatever to be able to do those. And you also, I think you have to have a, you know, a special invite. Yeah. Um, neither of the things that I've, I've been able to do so far. So, um, well, you got to get out of that backwater town you live in. Yes. The, the little bump in the road, the one, <laughs> the one stop light or the one stop sign town that I live in. Yeah. yeah. Which, one, um, which, I, I, I do have the interest, but I, you know, we haven't gone there yet. Yeah. Uh, you, you could, they do one, uh, just before Dayton. So make your Dayton plans to to come there early and do yeah. their, that, that, that might work out, yeah. you know, but, but there are other things that, that they do here that are different too. Like I know, um, I, I was talking to some people at a meeting I went to recently in the city or County of Los Angeles. If you want to do like a cert course, you know, the community, community emergency response team courses, um, all across the nation, there are people that are trained to, to provide the courses and go through the material and whatever in, in our jurisdiction, you have to take a course with, a um, employee of the city or county uh, fire department. Um, yeah, those are hyper local not, things. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Now, I don't. And, I don't and, know how how re uh, regularized they are across. Well, they use they use the there's a FEMA course. the The, the coursework is all FEMA based. Okay, but each individual um, jurisdiction can implement it the way they want to implement it. And when I took my course, and I took that even before I became a ham, it was the FEMA course, but it was, you know, um, delivered by the local municipality, and it was required, and I believe the requirement still is today here in Los Angeles County is that, you know, a firefighter has to provide you the the training, and no one else can do that, and they have a limited number of people doing it, and therefore they reach a limited number of people. Is Does CERT have a slot under ICS? Mm, they they're in uh, they're in there somewhere but you know far <laughs> far down the chain of command okay and it, and again it depends kind of on uh, again based on your jurisdiction on who you work with and how you report and again los angeles uh they work with um fire departments but i know from talking to other people throughout the state and and looking through um, you know, blogs and Facebook groups around certain whatever. It, it just varies from place to place. Some counties support them, some um, fire departments, some police departments. It, it just varies from, from wherever you are. Okay. So. I was remembering that um, when we were talking about Los Angeles being a small town, it's the second yeah. largest in the country. It is yeah. the, and in, in the, uh, the Chicago Marathon, 
uh, episode I was talking, or maybe it was just in the website, uh, or my description on the website calling Chicago the second city, even though it lost that distinction to Los Angeles in 1984. And somebody uh, put a note there. That they actually responded to the website. I think it's pretty cool. It doesn't happen often enough. That um, that's not why Chicago is called the second city. It's called the second city because it was reborn after the Great Chicago Fire, allegedly started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Right. Which was just a hyper hyped up newspaper, false, you know, fake news. It's not what happened. She but, didn't really uh, have a cow. No. Okay. And um, does she even exist? I don't know. Okay. I didn't dig in any farther than seeing seeing <laughs> that it was it was just something they made up to sell Got newspapers. It. Got it. But the city did did have the catastrophic fire and did rebuild. Right. And so I th- I think I lived in Chicago from 1962 to 1986 and I never heard that. Yeah, and I never lived in Chicago. I never heard either. Yeah. So I, I, I so I looked it up. Um, yeah. I did Is the that Google, the case? I did the Google. Well, it's um, it exists. It is passed around by people. It is not mm-hmm. as official sounding as the idea that it is just second in population. There was a guy who wrote a an article in um, New Yorker or Atlantic or something in about when I was born, about 1949, that um, was referring to Chicago and called it the second city. It had had that reference to some extent before that. And of course, the Mrs. O'Leary's cow thing was in the 1800s. But that was what cemented the reputation as a second city. And um, one of the other things was, if you live in Chicago, you're always count comparing yourself to New York as, you know, we were second and they are number one. If you live in New York, you don't care about Chicago. Mm-hmm. You barely heard about it. And I've noticed that once I left, even when I was living there, Chicago didn't make the national news very much. And now that I'm no longer there, I never hear about it. It's the third biggest city in the country. We never hear about it. We hear about New York. We hear about Los Angeles. We hear about Phoenix and Des Moines. Never hear about Chicago. It's rare. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I spent almost two years at at the NBC owned and operated television station. And the reporters, uh, we never had someone from that station or or a, um, a bureau reporter on the, the nightly news. Never happened. The city mm-hmm. doesn't exist. One more thing. I feel okay. like Steve Jobs. Have you heard about what's oh, happening? Wait, there's Dayton? more. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was something, uh, who said, um, Betsy said in the uh, chat group, I heard there's new buildings. Well, a new building. A new gonna, building. They are going to build new a new building. building in time for the Hamvention at the Green awesome. County Fairgrounds. It's something that they had talked about. Um, and... They are also kicking one of the businesses that had been occupying one of the existing buildings out. Uh, fairgrounds furniture, making uh, you know, friends you know, and neighbors wherever they go. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and it's it's Samvention. I, I yeah. read some articles in the local paper there and the Dayton paper, and it's basically they you know, terminated the lease because they were supposed to work a deal to get out for Hamvention, and they didn't do it. So huh. they're booting them out. So uh, Hamvention has some clout. Okay. Um, and so th- what they were saying in this article was that the, uh, the the total square footage of the new building and the old fairgrounds furniture building will be more than what they were using for the tents. So the tent uh-huh. city could be gone, which that would be good. I can tell that you are being summoned. <laughs> They've invaded. <laughs> it's been an but- hour and 20 minutes. Get the, get come, there. come say hi. Come say hi. We did use 20 minutes, didn't we? Since We did, and it's all good. I, I was surprised I didn't get text. Here's, um, hi. There's Lila. Lila is, um, I'm wait. Young. Yeah, Lila's the youngest. Leia, yeah, Lila's W0LRG. And then here's Gwen. Gwen, are you going to step in here? Gwen's coming in, but, but there's only room enough for one behind here. And here's, um, November 6th, Golf Mike Golf. Here's Gwen. Hello. And Lila. The, you don't so have an open in. speaker, right? They can't hear me. Yeah, they can't hear you. You can't hear Gary. Gary said hi. Hi, Gary. And Lila said hi. I'll tell, have to work on the speaker. Tell them you have beautiful daughters. Uh, Gary said you guys are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, if you guys go, I will wrap, and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> They're screws. Leave the screws. Don't touch. Okay, I'm curious. Okay. Yeah. 
Bye. All right. I believe we're done. I think we are. Covered some good stuff. We had a lot of people. We had we were up to twenty two in the chat room at one point, and or actually not in the chat room, but in the um, just watching. watching us live. Yeah. yeah, we dropped off when my daughters came, but I think people we told people that we'd be an hour, and that's all good. Thanks for doing this. It and was, um, it was three minutes ago when I said it's ten o'clock. You got to go. Yeah, it just seems like that, doesn't it? It does. It's a good thing. Well, but this, that's this, you know, that's what I tell all the people when we bring them on the show. They're like. Oh, we're going to be like two hours. They're like, I can't talk for more than 10 minutes. And when you tell them we did two hours and 20 minutes, they're like, what? We really did? Wow. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And this has been fun. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else thinks it's interesting, but, and I know we'll get, you know, complaints from Burton and, and one or two other people that say you should have edited the best stuff. I don't know what that would be. Go ahead and do it yourself. There are, there are some good comments in the chat room. I got some things to follow up on and some people, you know, said good stuff and they appreciate us. And, and if you do appreciate us, here's a great segue. <laughs> Hammer Radio Now is, is it, brought to you by the Begging yeah. for Funding Foundations. Foundation. Arvin. Founder. Find him. I haven't brought up the, the Begging I, for Funding part in a long time. Go to the website. That's find Arvin. To. Click the pig. Send us yes. some money. Patreon. And thank you. PayPal. Um, or cash in an envelope. And that has happened to me before. It's happened to me a little bit now and then. Yeah. Yeah. And, and thank you. Yep. Um, so we're not going to do the best part of the show because you got to go. I'm not yeah. going to sit here and do it myself. Right. And, and yeah, it might be the best part of the show when I'm gone, but <laughs> don't do it tonight. No. And, um, and I will, but I will say before I sign off, I have been doing lots of work in the West Coast studio here. I've got. Um, you going through Wirecast now? You're not. Uh, you know, I actually almost came in a little early to to speed it up, but I know the last time we did that, it was a lot of hollow mirrors. It doesn't and, have to uh, be. Yeah. So I think the next time we do it, I will I will have it up and running. But but I will tell you, I've got you know two hard drives. I got this PCs maxed out with RAM. I've got add on USB 3.0 cards. I got four monitors. I got three cameras. I got. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff going here, and I'm getting ready. I've got a bunch of scenes set up, and uh, I am David Goldenberg, W0DHG. <laughs> and I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ, over. And out. Because I could tell you were going to go on for another 20 minutes. I, I would. You know, if, if <laughs> it, the, well, the girls left the garage, although they left the door open, and it's cold. So that was perfect. Yeah. All right, well... Um, Merry Christmas. Happy happy post Hanukkah. You think you thank you. I do celebrate Christmas, but from the very secular I, it's okay. End of things. I don't I don't hold it against anybody or for anybody and and, and and I don't celebrate it like crazy. I mean mostly I keep my head as low as possible and hope it passes over without touching me too hard. You can yeah. tell it's caught, you know, a little bit here and there. Yeah, it's okay. It swipes out some hair every You got you got the tinsel in the back. Is there a tree in the house? Uh there is. Um Okay. So All you're right. celebrating. All right, hang on. Um, let's see. What can I do here? Does it make it into the studio? No, I have to learn how to run my system here. So I, I, I'm at the point where, you know, people will tell me, you know, many myriad of different greetings for the holidays. And I know people that get, you know, bothered and upset by one or the other or, or what have you. And I just smile and whatever they tell me, I... I agree back and I always use the happy holidays because that's the, where I come from. Oh, there you go. There's a tree up in that window. It sits there all year uh, on it, uh, new year's day. We will turn it off and you just turn and it off and, and it's still there. It still sits there and you can see it. You know, it's not, it's hiding, not a live tree. Especially then, if the I guess. lights on behind it. No, it's a, it's a fake tree. And, um, and then on uh, Thanksgiving day, we turn it back on. And the cat doesn't, the cats don't climb it? They can't get up there. That, that is oh, okay. on the, uh, it's a cathedral ceiling there. Oh, I got it, got it. So we have to get a, like a 12 foot ladder to get up there and work on it. Just to, just to turn it on? Yeah. I'll, um, let me put us back up here because I don't want to show all of my pictures, but I'll show you. And then we will end it because we will go another 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, here and I'll are. enjoy the 20 minutes, but I probably should. There we go. I want to see if I got Biggest Loser at the gym this week. That one might... There we go. Oh, there it is. 
Oh, there you go. Cindy working on it. Bef- oh, before we put it up. Yeah. And then the usual, not all the lights worked, so she had to right. find out what, what wasn't working. She's puzzling. I'm pointing out the fact that she has an electrical engineering degree. <laughs> and that she's up there and not you. Well, yeah, she wanted to be. And if you look way over here, there's a timer. So it, it goes on about four o'clock, goes off about midnight or so, one o'clock. Right. And then at four o'clock on New Year's Day, we'll turn it off. Turn it on next year. Four o'clock on New Year's Day. Yeah. So it doesn't come on New Year's Eve. I got it, got it. It well, uh, doesn't come on New Year's Day night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I saw some other pictures I'll, I'll show people when... When you go away. So <clears throat> have a, whatever you're about to do, enjoy it. All right. We will. Thank you so much. And, um, and I think we're going to be back before the new year, for the show next week. Okay. We have, we don't, we don't have anything specifically planned, but, um, uh, before the new year, I think we could probably work out, um, it's either gonna be tw- a- toward the end of the week. Cause you got some travel. Yeah, either either um, you know, either same same bat time, same bat channel as tonight, or on our you know regular little Sunday. Sunday evening. night is New Year's Eve. Oh yeah, it is New Year's <laughs> Eve. Well, you know, I yeah celebrated around the world. I might I might do it anyway. All right, we'll, we'll figure it out. I won't be here. I'll be in a oh, hot tub. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, good for you, Gary. Oh yeah, that's right. Because the regular time we do it is about New Year's Eve time. Yeah. We'll figure it out. All right. Well. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning okay, in. Okay, I'm pushing your off button. Okay. And I- everyone can hear the Skype sound. It's not asking me how good the call was. The call wasn't bad. Okay, so uh, I thought I saw a picture I wanted to, I wanted to show of something. Ah, not that one. Mm, oh yeah, this. Yeah, so I was at the grocery store. I, I'm you know, the house husband. Cindy's at work, and I had on my list. Have you seen um, the in dishwashers and in washing machines? You don't pour liquid into things anymore. That is so early two thousands. <clears throat> you get this little squishy packet of you know of soap in inside plastic um, that will dissolve when it hits the water. And um, so we've been using that. Theoretically, it's better, you know, it's going to be pre-measured and all that stuff. So I'm at the store, and we we ran out, I was supposed to pick up some, so I go to the store and there's way too many (laughs) to choose from. That's just some of what there was to choose from. So this, um, I'm I'm at the store. It's um, what Wednesday, Thursday afternoon, about two or three o'clock. <clears throat> There's another guy there, maybe about my age, looking just as puzzled as me as as I am at the selection of stuff that is there. And I said, uh, "So you can't figure out which one you need to get either, right?" He said, "Nope." So I'll tell you what I do when I run into a situation like that: I take a picture, and I send it to my wife. <laughs> And she tells me which one to get. And a couple minutes later, Cindy sent back a text that says, it's the one on the left. If you're, if you're wondering there. Oh, for those of you that are just listening to the audio, we're looking at, at these bags of Cascade. Um, the, the little, I'm not sure what to call them. Not quite a packet. Um, I don't know what to call it. It's got... There's nothing on the bag that says what it is, is there? Harmful if swallowed, because it you, you could almost, you know, this looks like something that would be good to pop in your mouth. Could be tasty. It's not going to be, but but it could. What do they call it? I don't know. little blob. Blob of detergent. All right, I'm going to... 
do a quick job of uh, getting this over onto YouTube. I'm not going to do any website stuff. And um, too busy tomorrow to spend much time prepping web and other publicity. So if you made it to this part, it's on you to get the word of this episode out to all of your friends. Tell everyone you know. And goodbye, Facebook. Now, for those of you that are watching, Facebook is turned off. For those of you that are watching YouTube and you get an extra couple of seconds, here's what I've been doing. I will say goodbye, hard drop. And then I just stop talking. But I'm simulating turning it off, but I'm not. I just go goodbye, hard drop. And I discovered that I'm still moving just a little bit too much there, so I do a freeze frame. I don't know why I, I did the fake part, because I could just say goodbye hard drive and, and cut it off on the drop. I have the technology. I know how to do that. This was a fun show. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Season's greetings. Happy New Year. Happy Easter. Next time you see the roaming gnome, he will have lost the Santa hat. <laughs>